post Bibia not only makes a more pronounced and more categorically categorical grant of powers to the, to the prospective Bangsamoro government over natural resources within the Bangsamoro territory. The powers granted therein are also wider and more extensive. For example, under the BBL, the Bangsamoro government shall exclusively be in charge of drawing up and formulating its own policies in mining and other extractive industries in accordance with their own development plans. Moreover, control and supervision over the EDU of strategic minerals within the Bangsamoro ter territory, such as fossil fuels, uranium, are no longer exclusive and reserved to, but now become a shared power with the national government. Unfortunately, however, the draft BBL crucially omits the aforementioned overarching provision under the armed law that mandates consistency with the Constitution and existing laws, which provision serves as a mighty check on the exercise of these extensive powers over natural resources in the army. Thus, considering that under the draft BBL, the Bangsamoro legislature both has authority to enact laws on matters that are within the powers and competencies of the Bangsamoro government and the power to formulate its own mining policies. It can then be argued that the Bangsamoro legislature is free to formulate policies and legislate on mining and extractive industries without having to attune to the policies and legislation with the Constitution and with existing laws. All this leads us to an apprehension that in the future, mining legislation and policy, as well as regulation of the mining industry in the Pansamoro, could be a substantial barriers or at a complete disconnect with those of the national government. Over this particular domain, made even freer and with even wider room to operate, the Bangsamoro legislature can thus enact laws that could effectively amend, render inapplicable, or even entirely supplant important and relevant mining laws that otherwise apply to the entire country without exception, such as the aforementioned Mining Act, the People's Small Scale Mining Act. For example, the President or the DNR could be deemed powerless to declare no go zones within the Bangsamoro territory, such as mineral reservations, protected areas, and other areas close to mining applications. In particular, the President's Executive Order No. 79 of 2012 could be rendered inapplicable in the Bangsamoro territory by a single stroke of the Bangsamoro Parliament. It might also be claimed that the Bangsamoro government is not in any way bound by the 2012 mine responsible mining policies of the government or the so-called six-point agenda. Let us remind ourselves of what those six points are. One, to ensure mining's contribution to the country's sustainable development, i.e. economic and social growth, and environmental protection. Two, adopt international best practices and promote good governance and integrity in the sector. Three, ensure the protection of the environment by adopting technically and scientifically sound and generally accepted methods as well as indigenous best practices. Four, ensure the consistency of local issuances with the constitution and national laws. Five, ensure a fair, adequate, and equitable shared economic benefit for the country and the people. And six, deliver efficient and effective management of the mining sector. With these, while this is all but speculation, they are nonetheless plausible scenarios owing to the lack of mechanisms that guarantee vertical alignment of, the, of our policies with the national government and sure safeguards for consistency with the Constitution and existing national laws. On another note, aside from the mining sector, even the manpower and the human resources 
of the industry stand to be affected by BPL. I am referring to the members of the labor force who earn a living from the mining industry and other industries for that matter within the Bangsamoro territory. More importantly, I am referring to the mining engineers and the entire sector of professionals who practice their profession in the Bangsamoro territory. What will happen to them? What will happen to you? Under the BPL, the Bangsamoro government shall take over and have exclusive control over labor, employment, and occupation within Bangsamoro. Again, following the logic that I have used earlier, the Bangsamoro legislature will be free to pass laws on these subjects to be made effective within its territory, and such laws shall prevail over relevant national laws that are in general application throughout the country, such as the Labor Code of the Philippines and the Professional Regulation Commission Act and others. As a result, the Bangsamoro government could have a separate Department of Labor and Employment that would enforce their own labor laws. They can have a separate National Labor Relations Commission that will adjudicate claims of employees. On the side of professionals, the Bangsamoro is also entitled to create a separate professional regulatory commission that will regulate the profession and other licensed occupations, including the conduct of board examinations and admission to the practice. Again, I do not see any institutional framework and mechanism that would ensure the full range of protection of labor and employment rights. In fact, during our hearing last Tuesday, the dollar precisely recommended certain revisions to the draft that would address the gaping deficiencies on this subject. The same is true with the regulation of professions, of which mining engineering is one. There are no mecha mechanisms in the draft BBL as, as, as was received by Congress from the panels. There are no mechanisms that aim to guarantee the highest possible standards for the ethical practice of professions and for admission thereto. In fact, I am writing to the Pref Professional Regulatory Commission next week to precisely see its opinion and recommendations on how to remedy this particular issue in the BBL. So, all these thoughts and ruminations serve to pose a threat to the integrity of the mining engineering profession. Admission to, continued membership, and practice of, which are, which are now being regulated around the country by RA 4274 or the Mining Engineering Law. The functions and responsibilities of the mining engineer in the industry and in society have steadily evolved over the years and are already quite clear cut and established as we speak, thus ensuring the mining engineer's indispensable role and continued relevance in the industry, not to mention his or her potential. However, the lack of clarity and seamlessness in the transition of power and governance and in the policy administration and regulation of both the industry and the important professions involved should trigger a rather unsettling feeling not only among the industry participants, all of you here, but also in the keen and concerned public servant like me. I am very concerned, and that is why I am doing what I am doing, and that is why we are doing all that we can to clarify all of these issues, to make it consistent with national policy, to make sure that the guarantees, the safeguards that we have evolved over so many years in the mining industry becomes something that is clear and that we know will be enforced. The mining sector of Mindanao, especially the mining engineers of Mindanao, can be assured that your humble public servant is doing all that I can to make sure that everyone in all sectors of society are heard and are informed so that their interests are properly covered 
and protect it. So that, so that in due time, they can, with pride and diligence that you have shown over all these many years, exercise a free and intelligent choice in this Herculean task which is being undertaken by our country. This, I firmly hope and believe, is my humble contribution, not only, not only to successfully ending our country's continued quest for peace and justice in Mindanao, but also to the strengthening of the integrity and unity of this Filipino nation. There is lots more. We have a great deal more work to be done in the Senate, especially during this one and a half month long Senate recess. The tawag nila dyan ay nag-break daw kami, nag-recess daw kami. Pero ito mas mabigat ang trabaho habang ng recess kaysa nung session. During, and it is in this period where I am expected to come up with our findings and prepare the best possible version of the BPL that we can present to our colleagues and to the Senate for their ultimate ratification. However, whatever, whatever happens in the Senate, however your elected representatives and ultimately the people decide, mining engineers have a very important role to play in this crucial period in our national history, and that important role must be recognized. As crisis professionals bestowed by the state with important privileges and responsibilities in the field of mining, you have sworn, above all, to maintain allegiance to the Republic of the Philippines, to support the Constitution and obey the laws, to conserve and protect the national resources of the state and to promote the development and use of such natural resources for the interest of the people. Let us do all we can so that you can be true to that oath and you can, can be, will be allowed to do your jobs properly. This, I believe, I believe that is, this is precisely the particular and possibly the rarest point in your career where you ought to feel and appreciate the transcendental privacy of your responsibilities to the state as you had sworn in your oath. Whatever else happens, I exhort you to be indispensable and proactive partners in the change. In the event of a transition in governance, act as worthy gatekeepers consensuously keeping and ensuring that any and all mining policies, legislation, and rules sought to be implemented in the region shall likewise guarantee the protection and conservation of our natural resources for the continued benefit of our children, grandchildren, and future generations. It is, in fact, up to you whether the mining industry will be a huge boost to the employment, to the economy of our country, or if it will end up being a disaster for our environment, for our ecology, for our communities. That is not a small responsibility. But again, it is up to us who write the laws under which you operate to allow you to do the best that you can to be true to your oath, and this is what I will do. Always keep, in your mind. Always keep in your mind and heart your sworn intergenerational responsibility. Indeed, responsibility and ind independent judgment are the qualities that are built in your, into your professional duties and etched in your psyche as mining engineers. As I shared with the Davao City Chamber of Commerce and Industry last month, I firmly believe that at the end of the day, the ultimate desire and aspiration of all our Kababayan, Muslim, non-Muslim, Christian, whatever, Ilocano, Misaya, Picolano, Tagalog, Lahat naman, all what we are searching for is the good life, a contented life, where we are able to go about our business, where we are able to care for our family 
and we are able to foster some hope for the future. Better and more fulfilling lives for ourselves, for our families, for their posterity. And this is all the more true for the mining industry, workers and professionals who are known for their legendary Gaia Dinero brand of work ethic and dedication in their design to uplift the quality of life of their families. We want the mining industry to always be strong and profitable, and we do not want to be bankrupt just as much as we dread the prospect of joblessness and unemployment, especially for you, the engineers. On our part as elected representatives of the people and public servants, our primordial duty then is to lay the building blocks to enable our people to achieve the better and more fulfilling lives that they aspire for. Ang hangad ko ay hindi lamang kapayapaan at kasaranan ng ating mga kapatid sa Bangsamoro, kundi pati na rin ang kanilang kasaganahan at kaundaran ng ating buong bansa. You can count on my guaranteed objectivity and fairness and my wholehearted service and assistance to the Filipino people in seeing this to its proper and nationally beneficial conclusion. Asahan ninyo. Asahan ninyo na gagawin ko ang tama. Tama para sa kapayapaan at kaularan sa Mindanao, tama para sa bansa, at tama para sa ating mga kababayan, lalo na para, para sa buong industriya ng minahan at sa lahat ng mga ilinyero na mga nagmimina sa Mindanao. Thank you for Thank you for your invitation and I hope that everyone has a meaningful, thought-provoking and productive symposium this year. Mabuhi ang Mindanao Association of, Min of Mining Engineers, mabuhi ang Mindanao, at mabuhi ang makusgan ng kahiusa o mauswago Pilipinas. Dagang salamat o maayong hapon kanina.